Afternoon everyone, good morning, good evening where you are. I thought I'd do a quick video on the button box as you can see on my screen here. There's a slight delay because I am currently using my phone to capture it through OBS to capture it on here but you can kind of see it. And on the main screen in front of you, you can see the vehicle. I said that I would show an example. So, so anyway, this button here starts it. And then if we turn it around here, we've got this one, which is side lights. We've got that one, which is main beam. Um... This one here is cruise control. That's the enter. That's the parking brake. So if we now accelerate. Hang on. Wait, hold on. Parking brake. So if we now disable the parking brake, we can now move. Um, this one is to change the views. Makes it a lot easier when you're doing photos or when you're streaming, right? That's the hazards. That one's the beacons, if you can see at the top. This one is the wipers. That one, sorry. However, these two don't seem to want to work. However, I've mapped this one to be and this one to be that one. Right, so if we quickly drive forward over to here, let's just go here for a minute. Right, parking brake. If I push this button here, this one just there, it activates the menu as you can see on your screen. Um, and that's pretty much all the buttons. Um, and then on my steering wheel, I've just got these two to look left and right. And then I've got this one for center. And pretty much nothing else is mapped. Yeah, so I've got everything on here. And I've got pretty much everything on here. I try my hardest to explain what the button box is and what it does. So it basically ties up most it basically ties up your buttons on your on your steering wheel. So before I was using a lot of the buttons on my steering wheel, like the XYB and all that. But now I have now got the button box to do it. Now since ever since i got the button box i didn't think i'd like it but it has been such a, a, a such a godsend for me because of the fact that you can do this and you can just pick a button rather than worrying about what buttons you've got i did get it for a good price it's a it is actually a it's actually a prototype from uh from a streamer called blue cat gaming for those on facebook will know um who, who i'm on about he's such a lovely guy um, as you can see, I've got the cruise control. The white button on the button box was the cruise control. I mean, the aluminium, the aluminium on this is fantastic, and you know, I'm not going to say in this video how much I paid for it because maybe he doesn't want me to know. But he made them. I bought it for a really good price, and to be fair, it is a really, really decent. It's a really, really decent button box, and I absolutely, do, I absolutely do enjoy it. And the box is fantastic. Um, there are a couple of buttons on there that I don't like, like the two, the the flash the horn and the horn. They don't work. Well, well, they do work, but it just has some sort of joyce. It has some sort of joystick conflict. So when you push it, the horn, the horn will just do this constantly. Do this. And, um, yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to do that. But anyway, that's just a, a minor little hiccup on it. And to be fair, it's not it's not a big issue. Um, but it also comes in hand at the fact that I can actually sit here, play my game, 
and still get a good frame rate of above 50. Above 50. Um, I'm capped at 60. And monitor is a really good monitor. I've got now got a 2060 Super as well. But if anything, I think the monitor is fantastic. So anyway, enjoy this drive to Galloway, and I will s and I will um, talk to you at the end. say is, is having this button box is absolutely amazing and it's probably one of the best purchases i've made in terms of my euro truck bus sim um it recognizes it in the it recognizes it in the control section as a generic usb but most games that have a usb support then the button box is going to work i'm surprised that it actually worked for microsoft flight sim i can only use uh the wiper button and the trailer brake for like the retarder and the engine for that and I can use the button for landing gear and the parking brake for parking brake and then the high beam main beam buttons for the lights and stuff and the hazard for landing lights uh, and then the cruise control button on here can activate um, what you call it um autopilot and then i can change views with the button so i'm actually surprised that it actually worked with microsoft flights in 2020 which is a little bit of a i would there was a shock how it, it, it um you know it was a shock how it did like flight sim but hey ho it's um pretty good Hope you're all doing good. I will. I hope you're all good. Um, I'll be playing a lot more of Euro Truck um, in the days to come. Uh, one because the graphics are really good, and secondly, it runs it runs like a dream on this computer now. It runs like a dream on here. I haven't changed anything else. I've just had. I've just got a new monitor, and I've also got a nice 2060 Super 8 gig graphics card. So. In theory, this game should run between 50 to 60 frames a second. It's not going to be the greatest frames. I'd like it to be a little bit higher, but in terms of streaming and recording, 1080p 60 is more than enough. And now I can stream off my graphics card, which now gives a little bit less strain on the CPU, which makes the game run a little bit better. And on the 27th of July, Microsoft Flight Sim is going to be updated with a new optimization. Uh, you would have thought with a 2060 Super you can run the game at medium graphics. No, you can't. I've tried it on a medium graphics on a 2060 Super with a Ryzen 7, was it 1700X? Um, and it, it runs well, well below 30 frames, depending on where you are. I've got as far as 40 on like those landing challenges, but it's less than 30. Um, but hopefully with it to come it should it should optimize the game and I should be able to run it better when we get to Galloway um, I'm going to um, show you how you map the controls in the section
I am currently am I'm I am currently am using Pro Mods 2.55, I think it is. Uh on the medium preset of Pro Mods. Gonna try and see if I can add in the try and see if I can add in um the high preset because upon checking my stats on my temps, I'm only using like two gigs worth of graphics. Um and I've got I've got eight gig here, so I could possibly try and bump it up. Um, and I will also show you all what my graphics settings and what the best optimized settings that I have. Um, I didn't actually change much. I just went into the I just went into Nvidia GeForce Experience and just let that optimize the game. Uh, and when I loaded up the game, it basically said, "Oh, the, these are the graphics that we like you to use." So I was like, "Okay, cool." So I have them set to what they are, and I do think the graphics look amazing. I do think it looks good. But I will say I'd never trust GeForce Experience because when I had the 2060 Super and it optimized American Truck to low graphics at 1080 low graphics um, and I was getting beyond 60. So I had to go into American Truck and I had to map the, the graphics myself to get to, um, to get to 60. And the graphics are pretty similar to what this are. Considering American truck is a lot more detailed. So it's not all ultra high. I think it's on high with a couple of exceptions of maybe a couple of things down to medium. I have the scaling on this at 200%. The mirrors are on medium. If I put the mirrors on high, the frame rate drops. So I think in all fairness, I'm running down the M6 right now at 60 frames a second flat. It goes above it. But it, but it won't go above 60 because I have G-Sync on. And uh, was it G-Sync and uh, NVIDIA sync thing that I have on my graphics card, which is compatible with the monitor. So now we're going to turn left. I can use the J-Brake. Listen to this. I'm using a button on the J-Brake. I can't, however, I can't, however, use the um, phone and stick it up against the button box and show you the buttons I'm using only because when I'm driving I can't really do it. Go straight on and then turn left. Because I've got to use my left hand to hold the phone and it's a bit and jaggy. Take the first exit. So it's not going to work but I can use this button now to have a look around. Exit now. And then take a left here to Limerick. I think I set the waypoint up to a petrol station. Sound and snug as a bug. Safe and sound, snug as a bug. Okay, we didn't set up a look. I mean, right, let me swing round. Okay, here we go. Right, I've swung round because I wanted to drop off at the um, petrol station so I can do all the buttons and stuff and then do the editing on the recording. Right, we're going a bit fast, so let's slow down. I'm using the J brake here. And then use the white button for cruise control. I need to get another camera so I can attach it to my, can attach it somewhere so I can show it. But it's okay for the phone, so it's better than nothing. Like for here. To use the jaybreak in this section here to slow down is just absolutely amazing to do and yeah it's it's fantastic i'm running in um i'm running on simple automatic you just drop the gear stick into drive because i'm still recovering from an accident and i don't want to keep constantly changing gears uh, because it still hurts my ankle so I am currently am using the clutch pedal to brake uh, just because the brake pedal is a little bit too stiff for my ankle right now. So I've been, I'm using the accelerator and the clutch to brake. Um, Go straight on but and I have then a, turn left. But I have a button mapped on the button box for brake anyway uh, for the J brake. So it helps for me. But you know, since buying a new graphics card, it has really helped with the frame rate quality and just watch this uh, recording back and it's a lot better quality to 
you know, record at and stuff, so which is fantastic. But right, we need to slow down here. Which which then ties up the buttons on here because I was using I was using these buttons for the lights and um, for the lights and cruise control. So now not being able to use these for cruise control and tie up on the button box has helped a lot in terms of what buttons I can use. And I have a lot more buttons here that I can map. Which means that I have a button on my steering wheel, which means that I can now mute my microphone on OBS. But graphics look amazing. Exit now. Exit now, okay. Left and, then turn right. and then we're going right here. But the good thing about stopping here is the fact that I can hold down the brake. Right. Because it hurts, still hurts me pushing the brake pedal. So I've been using the parking brake and the jaybreak but these are the wipers as i was saying some very squeaky wipers in my ass dad i can break off look right off we go turn left i can break on and then we'll just need to indicate and then we need to turn left In here well we might as well buy this let me show you so if i push the uh black button it says activate enter and i just need to push enter again and then it buys the garage right okay so what we're going to do is we're going to back into there I still haven't figured out how to reverse from inside the cab yet, so it's an outside view reversing. Right, so if I can break it on, I'm out of gear. Stop engine. So my opinion on the button box is it good to have yes is it good to have if you don't play muck if it, is it good to have when you don't play euro truck a lot no but it kind of it kind of gets the sense of you feeling like a real trucker um, um and it helps having a decent computer to help run it um there are probably better makes out there and stuff but I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the purchase I made. Uh, a streamer on Facebook and Twitch called Blue Cat Gaming. He makes them, and this was his replica with the with the Fusion display on it. And it is underneath of it. There's a little bit of uh, plywood that that sticks under the uh, steering wheel. But you know, my honest opinion on it is fantastic, and I absolutely love it. So yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy the little drive and the talk about the button box and I will see you all on the next stream. Thank you and goodbye. I said at the end of the video after doing the recordings that I'd show you all how to map this button box. So it might work for different people. Uh, for some reason it doesn't work for me. But what I found was is that with this top one you had to select it with the generic usb you had to select this one as the first one and then whatever other device that you're going to use after it. and then you leave everything how it is set here you don't touch any of this you go keys and button i'm going to show an example for one so for instance this is the easiest one to do so if you can see here right start stop engine so you click it and then you push the button that you want to map and it's as easy as that so let me unassign that 
So at the moment, it's nothing. You click it and then you push the button. So for instance, it's going to be this one here. So you push it and then it maps it. The same thing again for the engine brake. Was that engine brake or parking brake? Ready? So it's down. Boom. Done. And it's as easy as mapping the controls and you just go through and activate all you want. However, it depends on what button box you go for. But for me, these two don't seem to want to register. So if I show you, if I go up to the horn here, so let me map it here. I'll show you. It doesn't work and I'm pushing it right now and it doesn't work. However, this one will work for the horn which is really annoying. I pushed the button and it doesn't seem to want to work. So 